So we are continuing with the subject of walk with him. And so <clears throat> in your mind, when you hear the words walking with Jesus or my walk with Jesus, what does that look like? You know, is it, you know, you and Jesus holding hands, walking straight, nice through a field of flowers, you know, birds in the air, chirping, you know, just walking along, just this peaceful, straight, serene, relaxing walk? Who pictures that? Nobody, I guess. And the reason being is because that's not what a walk with Jesus looks like, is it? You have a lot of challenges. You have a lot of obstacles that we have to face. And so, <clears throat> the longest straight road on earth is 150 mile, 159 miles in Saudi Arabia going through this desert and it's pretty much flat and straight for 159 miles. And so, <clears throat> you know, if you take into consideration the size of the world, 159 miles is just very short distance that you'd be able to walk straight without really any any resistance without any obstacles you know where most places you know if we set four people and pointed them north south east and west you know anywhere within half a mile of here you could probably only walk maybe a hundred yards before you would come to a fence, you'd come to a curb, you would, you know, come to a tree or a house. You know, you wouldn't be able to get very far. And I feel that that is true in our Christian walk, in our walk with Christ, is we don't usually get very far without meeting some obstacle or some resistance. <clears throat> and did you know that it is impossible for humans to walk in a straight line? We just can't do it our, with our, our heads and stuff. You can get fairly close if you're looking at an object in the distance and focused on the object. You can get pretty close to walking in a straight line. But... What's interesting is people that are lost in a jungle where there's no like fixed object that they can look out, they will always go in a circle. And you're like, what? Yeah, it's true. You can look it up. I did. <laughs> so they will always walk in a circle. And what's even more interesting is... Democrats will always walk on a leftward circle and Republicans will walk on a right-hand circle. Da -da no. <laughs> Come on, we got to make little jokes, you know. Um, that's how you can tell if you're truly committed. Just get lost in the jungle, see which way you walk. No. Um, <laughs> and... <clears throat> I feel like oftentimes at church, it's a lot better to focus on the good verses, the happy verses. You know, almost everybody can quote Romans 8.28. God will work to good for good. Or wait, oh gosh, and then I mess it up. All things <laughs> will work for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. You know, we share that a lot. You know, my son likes Jeremiah 29, 11, even though I had to remind him about it the other day, which says, I know the plans I have towards you, 
you. Thoughts? See, I'm just messing it up. I know the plans I have. Thoughts of good, not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And we hold on to these verses, and then we leave church, and how many of us, before we even have gotten home, have, you know, we're listening to Caleb, we get out the parking lot, and by the time we reach Planet Fitness, we're yelling at our numb school kids in the back, saying stuff that is not Christian-like, <laughs> is not motivated by love, you know, or you get cut off by, you know, somebody trying to beat you to Red Robin, and, you know, we say a few choice words. And so we start meeting resistance as soon as we, as soon as we leave the parking lot, you know. And so, Jesus talked about, in uh, John 15, it's right after communion, it's this beautiful time where he's with his disciples, he's, they do communion, he gives them the, I am the vine, you are the branches speech, you know, which is just like, Right on, you know, super encouraging, super exciting. And then in John 15, 18 and 19, if you have your Bibles, we can turn there. You know, he just gets done doing the, I am the vine, you are the branches. And then he goes right into, when the world hates you, remember it hated me before it hated you. The world would love you if you belonged to it, but you don't. I chose you to come out of the world, and so it hates you. And so it's like this great time where, you know, it's like good feelings. And then Jesus is like, well, the world hates me, and it's going to hate you. So be ready. And it's like, what? Are you sure that's what you meant to say? And then, <clears throat> all throughout the, the epistles in the New Testament, James 1 says, Therefore, brethren, take joy when you experience trials of many kinds. For the testing of your faith develops perseverance. You know, so Jesus says, you're going to have trials. The world's going to hate you. You're going to get persecuted. James says, take joy in the trials. He doesn't say you're not going to have them. He says, take joy in them. <clears throat> Second Timothy 3, 11 through 12, Paul says, all who desire to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. 1 John 3, 12-13 says, Cain killed Abel because he was doing what was right. So don't be surprised when the world hates you. If, you know, you guys are like, wow, great sermon, Bobby. You know, way to cheer us up. But <clears throat> if you look at the nation of Israel all through the Old Testament, they had a rough time. They experienced a lot of trouble, a lot of persecution. Basically, everyone wanted to kill them. And not too much has changed. But God was with them. His presence as Mary Lou reminded me this morning, you know, they carried the presence of God with them in the tabernacle. You know, so God was with them through all those trials, all those shenanigans, all the craziness. So, it's clear in the Old Testament, Jesus tells, tells his disciples to expect it. 
Paul, James, Peter, and John all wrote about us having trouble, about us having persecution, and about us having trials and tribulations. And if we go the passage that's on your bulletin, 1 Peter 4.12, it says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, because these trials will make you partners with Christ in His suffering, and afterward you will have the wonderful, wonderful joy of sharing His glory when it is displayed to all the world. Be happy if you are insulted for being a Christian, for then the glorious Spirit of God will come upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into other people's affairs. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by His wonderful name. And so, a few things that I want to point out here is we shouldn't be surprised when life throws us a curveball. When Elijah was younger and smaller, much, much smaller, he had this quite annoying habit of, you know, you'd be sitting there standing with a, a couple of people and he would walk up just be standing there and then you'd be talking and he'd just randomly just wham gut punch you and you know he was small so it was kind of like you know he could get away with it but he was still strong enough to where if it caught you the right way it would basically knock the wind out of you a little bit and so this this little kid would come up and his you know he'd do it to his grandpa you know, <laughs> he'd, he'd do it to, you know, I'm sure he probably did it to Pastor Rex. And, you know, at some point in time, you know, he, because he was a little kid, he didn't matter. And, it, like, it was fun to him, you know, just punching people in the gut. And so, <clears throat> I think that sometimes that's life, you know. We'll be going along having a conversation, thinking things are good, and then all of a sudden, wham, we get that gut punch. We get that, you know, cancer gut punch. We get that, you know, fighting with your spouse gut punch. You get that, you know, friend or family had some trauma gut punch and it's when we're sitting there kind of gasping for that breath is where we need to turn to the Lord we need to cry out for his strength for his passion because just like he promises over and over that we will face trials, that we will face persecution, that we will face these things. He promises over and over and over that He will never leave us or forsake us. That He will walk right along beside us. And so, you know, I see our walk with Christ is more like you know, American Ninja Warrior or Ultimate Beastmaster. You guys know what that is? Or, okay, how about an Army Obstacle Course? <laughs> you know, like, there's different things, and we watch, we watch people, you know, I used to love watching the, the Ninja Warrior show, because you'd watch these people, and 
they'd be all hyped up and they'd be talking about how they trained and did all this stuff. And then it's like, they'll fall on the first like little jump or something. And I can't help but kind of chuckle. But then I always watch where the people that actually make it to the end, they go through the whole thing and it's usually like the little warped wall at the end where they have to run and jump and hang on to the wall and pull themselves up and then like climb up a ladder and hit the buzzer. And they get so excited, you know, half of them are crying, they're screaming, they're jumping up and down, they're raising their arms, you know. And I feel like that's going to be that celebration when we're with the Lord, you know, when we, you know, our buzzer is rung, so to speak, and we get to celebrate in that, and it'll be awesome. And it makes all the training, it makes all the trouble, all the trials, all the tribulations, you know, they're not worried about their hands that are, you know, skinned up because they were holding on to the bar too tight or anything like that. They're rejoicing in that victory. So, one thing I also want to point out is, it says in verse 16, it says, But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the... Er, oh wait, no. 15, sorry. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into other people's affairs. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his wonderful name. And so, I think sometimes we have self-induced suffering. And what I mean by that is if, if we're doing stuff that we know God would not support, would not be behind, if our actions are that way, if our words, if our, you know, minds are that way, then we are, we are causing our own suffering. We are making our life harder than it needs to be. And, you know, it says, if you suffer, don't let it be for murder. And you're like, well, I didn't kill anybody, so that's good. You know, if you suffer, don't let it be for stealing. Well, I don't steal things, at least not that people notice. And then, you know, or making trouble. I don't make too much trouble, but sometimes I do. And then, you know, or meddling in people's affairs. That's a tricky one. Because <laughs> we all like to get into the drama, you know. <clears throat> but I think if if we're honest with ourselves, we can we can evaluate our life, evaluate our current situation. And we can we can put the hard things that we're dealing with almost in in the two categories. There's there's trials that maybe God is is putting in our life to test our faith to draw us closer to him. And then there's some trials that we've kind of brought upon ourselves. And God is good and God is gracious and he will still meet us in those trials and he will still draw them out of those trials or draw us out of those trials. But, you know, we have to do our part in, in confessing and recognizing it is what it is. And that we brought that on ourselves. <clears throat> well, I'm going to get a little drink here. My voice is... So, I want to close with my favorite psalm. Psalm 27. Because if you think of David, 
David was constantly in battles. He was constantly at war. He was constantly facing challenges and trials. You know, he had the king of Israel after him wanting to kill him. You know, and so in here, Psalm 27, when he's talking about an army encamped against me, it was a little literal army that would be encamped against him. It wasn't a imaginary army. You know, this was very real to him. And so, you know, I've never had an army encamped against me. You know, there's been a few Monday mornings at the mission where I might have, you know, two or three guys outside waiting to talk to me at my office, but, you know, they aren't there to beat me. They're, you know, at least not yet. Um, they're there to talk and go through some things because of, you know, something that happened over the weekend or whatever. And so that's probably the closest thing that I've had to an army encamped against me. And so, you know, I'm pretty blessed in that way. But David literally faced this opposition. These things are literal to him. And so, I'm going to read this section of scripture. It's a little long, but it's really good. And so, Psalm 27, and it just talks about God meeting us through our hard times, through our struggles, through our persecution, through our trials. It says, Psalm 27, 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord protects me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil comes to destroy me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will know no fear. Even if they attack me, I remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will not conceal me when trouble comes. He will hide me, or for he will conceal me there when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle I will offer sacrifices and shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Listen to my pleading, O Lord. Be merciful and answer to me. My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. I'm going to repeat that one. My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not hide yourself from me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the path of honesty, for, all, for my enemies are waiting for me to fall. Do not fall... Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I have never done and breathe out violence against me. Yet I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Yet I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So, I want to read that verse again. Verse 8, it says, My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. So, if you're in the midst of a trial, if you're in the midst of a struggle, if you're facing opposition, 
if you're facing persecution and your heart was tugged this morning you know I, I love that it just says my heart has heard you say come and talk with me and my heart responds Lord I'm coming so if you are struggling and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ you can change that this morning because life is rough life is hard we get gut punches we get opposition we get struggles and I know that I need the Lord to get me through I need his strength I need his love I need that relationship with him and so if you haven't started that relationship I want to give you an opportunity and you know like we do here at the pursuit we're gonna pray and if you guys will just pray along with me just repeat after my prayer and if you want to accept Jesus Christ pray that prayer because he will be with you you will no longer have to face these things alone. And there's such comfort in that. There's such joy in that. There's such strength in that, knowing that you have somebody with you all the time. Let's pray. Jesus, we do, or Jesus, I do just confess that I need you. You guys can go ahead and repeat. Sorry. Jesus, <laughs> I confess that I need you. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I need your help. I need your help. I need your forgiveness. I need your forgiveness. I feel your call. I feel your call. And I'm answering it with my heart. I'm answering it with my heart. Come and live inside me. Come and live inside me. Come and help me walk with you. Come and help me walk with you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. So, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, don't leave here without letting somebody know. Because we want to come alongside you. We want to encourage you. We want to pray with you. We want to give you a Bible if you need a Bible. And walk along with you. Because not only will you get God who won't leave you. You'll get this family. This crazy family of the Pursuit Church that will take you in and love on you and we won't leave you either sometimes you might wish we would leave you but we won't no <laughs> so <clears throat> but the prayer team will be up here as well if you know if you if you were if you have a relationship with the lord and you're struggling and you need some prayer come and take advantage of it you know that's why we're here we want to be praying with you guys. We want to help and encourage and equip you guys because life is hard. You know, we have an enemy that wants to devour us. And so, I didn't write down the benediction. Do you got it, Josh? Just tell them what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, Lord... Bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, and go with you today. You're sent. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's teaching at Pursuit Church. We pray that the teaching today will encourage your faith in Jesus Christ to draw you closer to him and give you a better understanding of his word. If there's a way that we can minister to you, pray for you, or encourage you in your faith, please reach out to us on our website, 
pursuitnazarene.org and click on connection card. Also, you can share this video with others and encourage them. Thank you and we'll see you next time.